Good morning and welcome to the virtual sanctuary here at the Grove. My name is Minister Nikki Tolliver and I am the Minister of Assimilation and Growth here. It is both my joy and my privilege to welcome you. And whether you are watching on your tablet, your laptop, or your phone, whether you're in the kitchen, the dining room, or in the bed, the psalmist declares that we should make a joyful noise unto the Lamb, that we should serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing, knowing that the Lord is God, and it is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. The Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever to all generations. If you believe that and know that to be true, won't you help our music ministry as we lift up and worship and praise that awesome name of our God. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul loves Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. God, we bless your name this morning and we give you honor and we give you praise. Lord, we have hearts of gratitude on today. You mean so much to us. You've done so much for us. We love you, Lord, more than anything, more than anyone. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands with us this morning. Come on. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. You're so holy, you're so righteous, you're so beautiful, and we love you more than anything. Come on, if you know it, sing along. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything. It's really simple, come on. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything, yeah. Lord, I praise you. I lift my hands and raise you. Lord, I praise you. More than anything. Praise you. Lord, I praise you. I lift my hands and raise you. Hey, Lord, I praise you. more than anything. Come on, let's sing. I love you, Lord. Hey. Come on and lift your voice this morning. Hey. Let's sing a love song to the Lord. God, we love you more than anything. Come on, sing. you more than anything. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything. Does anybody need him? Lord, I need you.
first loved us. Yes. You've done for us what none other would do. You've done for us what none other could do. And Lord, we were amazed by you. Yes. Lord, we are amazed by you. Lord, we're amazed by you, how you love us. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed. Lord. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. How you love me. How you love me. 
How deep? How deep? How wide? How wide? Your love is everlasting. How great? How great is your love for is your me? Love where you are, just love on the Lord. Wherever you may find yourself right now, just begin to just worship Him. Thank Him for His love. Nobody loves us like Him. Amen, amen. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful that Jesus loved me, loves me, loved me when I was unlovable. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Beloved, won't you join me in reciting the road covenant of commitment? We'll read it together. It says, I am a kingdom citizen. My faith is in Jesus Christ and my future is bright. I don't chase environments, I change environments. I don't follow signs and wonders, signs and wonders follow me. I create the world I want to see by the words I say, and the words I say are the words God has said. I don't live off the resources of the world I'm in, I live off the resources of where I'm from. When I speak, I sound different. When I move, I walk different. The world has to pay attention, and the enemy hates it. I am a kingdom citizen, and my assignment is at the Grove. I fully embrace that assignment, and in that effort, I will protect the harmony of the Grove. I will share the responsibility of the Grove. I will serve the ministry of the Grove. I will support the witness of the Grove. With the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit, I will fulfill my assignment. Amen? Amen. Our scripture for today is found in Ephesians, the third chapter, the 14th through the 21st verse. Again, that is Ephesians, the third chapter, the 14th through the 21st verse. And it reads, 
When I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinity more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. It's prayer time. It is time where we talk to our loving and kind God. And if you have a prayer request, Brothers, sisters, uh, feel free to place those in the comment section, or you can email those prayer requests to our intercessory prayer team at prayer at the grove dot, excuse me, prayer at the grove nash dot org. And our intercessory prayer team, our I team, will go before the Lord with your prayers all throughout the week. But right now, we gather as a community to talk to our God, to tell God what ails us, to tell God thank you. Won't you join me in prayer? Gracious and kind God, we're grateful and thankful for another time to worship and praise you. God, we're thankful for another day, another chance to right wrongs, and another time to say thank you for loving us. God, we are so grateful and thankful for the Grove. Thank you, Lord, that you have kept us together. Thank you, God, for the visionary leadership of this church and the leadership of this church down through the years. God, we come today with our mask removed. Many of us are standing on weary and tired legs. God, but yet we're still standing on faith. And while we don't have a deadline, we do have a declaration. And that declaration is you've been good to us. God, we know you see all things, know all things, and you love us. And so it's with that in mind, we come calling on you. We come to cast our cares to you. Cares for the economy, cares for our family, cares for social unrest, cares for gentrified Nashville, cares for our children, cares for our health, and cares for our church. We cast these on you because you care for us, and we know you will handle them according to your will. Lord, there are so much to worry about, family, finances, health, relationships, politics, jobs, and the list seems to get longer by the day. But we give all our worries and cares to you. We thank you for being a God that we can cast our cares to, and thank you that when we trust you, our worries are not victorious. We pray for direction and for you to lead and guide us. There are so many decisions, so many opportunities, challenges, and we deeply need your guidance to make the right decisions. Give us clarity and confidence to make the right moves. Oh God, please show us the way. Help us to be our own blessings and the answers to our own prayers. We want to be your embodiment on earth. God bless the sermon as it goes before us. Help us to connect to it and let it be transformative so that your people may be edified and convicted to live more according to your will, God. And God, we praise you in advance for answering our prayers, for lifting up our bowed down heads and easing our minds. Thank you for loving us. And God, we pray for those who are experiencing wonderful Valentine's Day and those who might not be, God. Whatever the status, our relationship status may be, remind us of Christ 
and the greatest love that Christ showed for us. God, remind us how great your love is for us, how deep, how wide, how strong your love for us, that if it was an ocean, we'd all be drowning in your love. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for being a name we can call on. It is in the name of peace, of justice, of love, and that brown-skinned day laborer who was executed by the state but risen by the Spirit. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What another wonderful day we've been afforded to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Good morning, Grove family. I am absolutely delighted and excited to greet you once again in the virtual sanctuary. My name is Pastor John Faison, the senior pastor here at the Grove, and I'm excited to welcome you here because I believe God has something in store for us. I know I say that often. In fact, probably say it every week, but it's true every time I say it. When we gather together, there is purpose and intentionality behind our gathering. That God desires to do something every single time that is just as the word says, exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. If you will come with expectation, I promise you, God will meet that expectation with response. God is able to meet us right where we are. And I believe you were led here today by divine providence. I believe that God has led you by God's spirit that you might experience an encounter with God that can be transformative. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. None of us will never, ever be the same again. Excited about this worship opportunity and glad that you've joined us today. A few reflections I want to share with you today. First of all, of course, every time we gather together, uh, giving is a part of our worship experience. It is a manifestation of our tangible and actualized faith. Whenever we give to an almighty God who is the source of everything that we have and everything we have ever received, we show God that we trust God with what God has given to us. We show God that we walk by faith and not by sight. We trust God with what God has given to us and we place it back into God's hands because God can do more with it than we can. Listen, as the senior pastor here at the Grove, I want to say with all my heart once again, thank you. Thank you for your continued faithfulness, your continued stewardship, your consistent partnership so that this ministry might be all that God is calling it to be. We believe that Eyes still have not seen and ears still have not heard. Neither has God, uh, uh, into, neither has it entered into the hearts of man what God has in store for those who love him. And we love God and we believe that God has something incredible for our future. And you're helping us to get there. You're helping us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ on a consistent basis. You're helping us to minister to those who might be separated, ministering to those who may be even incarcerated. You're helping us provide uh, ministry to those who need it the most, helping us to be the hands and feet of God in this season. We're grateful because of your contributions. We're able to do all the things God uh, allows us to do, and, you're, and the Spirit of God leads us and guides us. And it's our prayer that you will be blessed some 30, some 60, some 100-fold because of your faithfulness. You've got three ways you can give. The first way is through our website, thegrovenash.org. You go to that website, click on the Give button. Very simple, very intuitive. Second way you can give is through an app called Givelify. You download that app, and you'll be able to give from anywhere in the world. The third way you can give is for those who are unfamiliar or perhaps uncomfortable with online giving. We understand it. We get it. You simply take your uh, gifts and deposit them into a stamped envelope. Send it to our church address, Watson Grove Baptist Church, 1415 Horton Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37212. And they will go exactly where they are designated to go. I want to remind you also, today is uh, a moment for our children's church, and we have children's church available for those, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade, available right on our website. You simply go to the website, right where you see the on-demand button, there's a children's church button. At the time of the sermon, uh, they can head that way and enjoy a lesson and a, a children's church experience that will speak directly to them. I want to remind you also that after the end of our worship, right, at the, immediately at the end of our worship, uh, we do something called the after church check-in. It's kind of the virtual back door, if you will. It allows us to connect with partners and friends and guests who have attended our worship service. We'd love to see you there at the after church check-in right on Facebook Live, our Watson Grow Facebook page. We'll be hanging out there welcoming you 
answering any questions that you might have, and loving on one another. Uh, it's always a joyful, joyful time. Listen, we are heading into our Lenten season very quickly. Ash Wednesday is coming, February 17th, and we are celebrating Ash Wednesday uh, in a powerful way. Uh, Tuesday, the day before that, Tuesday, February 16th, between the hours of 4.30 and about uh, 8 p.m., you'll be able to come and you'll be able to grab what we call your Lent in a bag. Lent in a bag. We've got some uh, uh, portable elements that we want to give to you, safe, of course, sanitized, give them to you, and allow you to be able to worship uh, uh, during our Ash Wednesday observances on the next day, Wednesday. You've got two opportunities to do it. Uh, the first one is at 6 a.m. during our morning prayer time. We're going to turn our prayer call into an Ash Wednesday service right there in the morning, and you'll be able to uh, engage with that with your Lent in a bag. Or you can join us at 6 p.m. that night on Facebook Live, we'll be doing another Ash Wednesday service, and you'll be able to participate that way. However you want to participate, you have the opportunity to do so, and we look forward to connecting with you in that way. This prepares us to get in line for our Lenten fast that begins on February Sunday, February 22nd, and goes through Sunday, April the 4th. You will notice that on our website, we've got an absolutely uh, well-explained, elaborate brochure that you can download right there from the website. It'll provide you all of the details you need for the fast. Here's what I want you to know about fasting. When it comes to fasting, it is not about what you give up. It's about what you gain. It is not about what you lose. It's about what you learn. Fasting is about setting something aside in our lives that is significant to us so that we can make more room for the presence of God to be increased in our lives. I promise you this journey will be transformative. Align with that Lenten fast uh, for the month of February and March. We'll be sharing from a sermon series and teaching series entitled The Inward Journey or The Journey Inward. It speaks to what it means to really go deeper in God. It really talks about some of the spiritual disciplines and the steps that we can take to prepare our souls to grow more. You do know that you and I can't engineer growth in God. We simply have to set the stage for the Spirit to bring forth the fruit in our lives. I want you to join us. It's going to be a challenging series, but I think it'll change us to the journey inward. Listen, I want you to grab a hold of these announcements that are coming next and uh, make sure you pay attention to those. I believe they'll help us throughout our week. Thank you for worshiping with us online today. We pray you've been blessed by the service thus far. Here are a few important updates for this week. Lenten season is approaching, and here at The Grove, we are preparing for a time of consecration. We are beginning with a virtual Ash Wednesday celebration. Partners and friends can come by the church Tuesday, February 16th from 4.30 to 7 p.m. to pick up their Lent in a bag materials. Then join us on Wednesday for our Ash Wednesday prayer service. There are two opportunities to participate. Join us during the normal Wednesday prayer call on Instagram Live at 6 a.m. Central or meet us on Facebook Live at 6 p.m. Central for another opportunity to participate virtually. For more information, visit thegrovenash.org. 2021 is the year of imagination at The Grove. Our biggest responsibility this year is not removing all of the present issues, it's reviving our imaginations. During this Lenten season, we seek to do that through commitment and consecration. During the Lenten season, we will engage in a six-week period of fasting and prayer. It begins at 12 a.m. on Monday, February 22nd, and ends at 12 a.m. on Sunday, April 4th. We have prepared a guide to assist you and answer any questions you may have along the journey. Please visit our website, thegrovenash.org, to download your copy of our 2021 Lenten Fast Guide. Are you in need of a physical copy of your 2020 giving statement? Visit thegrovenash.org today to request your copy to be mailed to you. You can also access your statement electronically via our partner portal on the website. For questions, please email finance at thegrovenash.org. As we prepare to reopen service, we are in need of volunteers to ensure optimal health and safety efforts for all of our partners and friends. If you're interested in serving as security clean team, health and wellness, or a greeter, please visit thegrovenash.org to sign up today. Did you miss the first Zoom with Pastor Faison? We had so much fun, we are back and ready to do it again. Join Pastor Faison for an interactive Zoom hangout. Meet us in the Zoom chat room on Wednesday, March 3rd at 7 p.m. Registration is required for Zoom access. To register, 
Visit thegrovenash.org today. For more information about what's going on, be sure to stay tuned to social media or as always, you can visit our website, thegrovenash.org. We can't wait to connect with you. so much in my heart I want to say to you Lord there's so much you are so much you've done but I think if I can get some help from you Lord in my heart I'm going to try to relay it right now oh but please forgive me Lord if right now I start to cry. I've got to tell you how I, how I love you.
Hallelujah. How many of us, how many of you love the Lord with your whole heart? That you've made up your mind that you won't live a life of compartmentalization, that you have decided to give all of yourself, heart, mind, body, soul, strength, everything you possess, giving it to God in adoration and obedience and in connection to the Savior who makes all things possible. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that however we come to God, God receives us just as we are. Come on, let's go to God in prayer. God, thank you for the reality that you receive us and you accept us just as we are. Thank you, Lord, that you receive every gift we submit to you. You hear every cry we make. You hear every gesture of obedience and you receive it. You respond to it. You welcome it. For Lord, you desire more than anything to be connected to your children. Thank you for being a God who hears and answers prayer. A God who is so deeply invested in us that there is nothing that hell or heaven could do to separate us from your love. We belong to you. Thank you for owning us. Now, Lord, as we go and dive into your word, it's our prayer. So you'll let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart allow it to be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God, preach through me, to me, and for me. Send the word so your people are edified, but in all things, it's your name that receives the glory. I bless you today for the treasure that you've placed in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. Punish not your people now for the frailty of your preacher. Allow me to say it the way you want it said. Have your way this day. We pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We are excited to dive back into our sermon series entitled The Journey Inward. It takes us into exploration of the spiritual disciplines and wrestling with what it means to dive into the depths of our souls that we might hear Christ and grow more. That today brings us to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 is where, we, where we're going to begin. I'm going to read down to the 21st verse. A little bit of what we dealt with last week, but we'll try to expand it a bit more today. Ephesians chapter 3 beginning at verse 14 reading to the 21st verse. Here's what it says from the New Living Translation. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your hearts will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. You may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more we might ask or think glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever amen 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 I want to talk today with the Holy Spirit's guidance and with your prayers from the subject go deeper go deeper Richard Foster writes in his book celebration of discipline these powerful words. He says, the desperate need today is not for a greater number of intelligent people or gifted people, but for deep people. The desperate need for today is not a greater number of intelligent people or gifted people, but we need more deep people. 
See, in these words, Foster reminds us that the world can be a very shallow place, meaning it is superficial, it is trite, it is too consumed with things that don't matter and perhaps too obsessed with stuff that won't last. Foster offers that the answer to a shallow world is deep people. But in order to have deep people, they must escape the influence of and addiction to this shallow world. I believe Richard Foster was right when he wrote his book in 1978, and I believe it is still correct today. See, a shallow world needs deep people, people who will be ruled by the Spirit of God, not the seductions of this world. People who will be rooted in integrity, not controlled by image. People who will stand for truth even when lies are popular and rewarded. People who will embrace loving others no matter how much they get hated for it. People who know the materials of this world cannot compare to the treasures of knowing who we are and whose we are. The good news is that as believers in Christ, we are equipped with everything we need to go deeper. In fact, believers are called to lives of deep living, called to a level of connection and collaboration with God that will result in changed people who change the world. But that depth that we're called to, that level of depth that we ought to be functioning and operating in, if we're honest, doesn't come naturally, nor does it come easily. Oh, I know, I know you love Jesus, but tell the truth for a moment. It's hard to do deep living in a shallow world. Tell the truth today. It, it's, it's hard to do what is important when what is immediate keeps grabbing your attention. It's hard to love God with all of your heart, your mind, and your strength when your heart is broken and your mind is confused and your strength is depleted. C come here, Christian. Let me talk to you. you, you, you you're not exempt. From the temptations, the testings, and the trials that come from navigating a shallow world. If you and I are not careful, we too can be seduced by the ways in which this world operates. We'll end up getting focused on what we get, not what we can give. We'll end up focused on who's blessing us and not who we are blessing. We'll end up fixated on how much credit we'll get, not on who we can celebrate. And before we know it, we find ourselves drowning in that same shallowness. So then, if depth is what we want, and it certainly, without question, is what we need, then we must realize it does not happen automatically. Depth in God comes from intentionality in our journey. We gotta, we, 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 we must make our inward lives a priority. Instead of being so focused outward, we've got to turn our attention inward. Because who we are inwardly will always show up Who we are inside will always reveal itself externally because you can't be shallow and do deep things. You will always produce fruit from the roots of who you are. By developing depths in our soul, we are equipped to engage deeply in our world for God. If you don't mind for a moment, I, I, I want to I, I take and help you take a quick depth survey, if you don't mind. Now, now, when I ask these questions, these are rhetorical questions. I don't want you to answer out loud. I simply want you to take an inventory within. Can, can, can I ask you some questions this morning? H how much attention are you giving 
to your inward life? How much energy are, are, are you providing for the journey inward? You spend more time getting dressed than you do addressing your soul? How, how, how does your prayer time compare with your social media screen time? How often do you silence the world around you so your soul can hear the gentle whisper of the God who loves it most? Is your communication filled with depth, trying to edify and uplift, or is your conversation shallow, filled with the insignificant and the unimportant? Are, are, are the people in your life interested in deepening their souls in God? Or are they more concerned with deepening their pockets, their publicity, and their popularity? And if it's the latter, why do you fit in so well with them? Could it be that birds of a feather flock together? Beloved, I, I, I didn't mean to bother you. I, I, I don't mean to get in your business, but this this, 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 this endeavor of, 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 of taking the inward journey is one God calls each and every one of us to. And we've got to be challenged and confronted from time to time with the reality that we are not always as serious as we say we are about this journey. Whatever the results of our survey, the simple reality is that all of us, every single one of us needs to go deeper. The good news today is that just as bad as we need to go deeper in God, God wants us to dive into those depths even more. Just as badly as we need the journey, God wants us on the journey even more. Life in Christ is designed for this kind of experience, one that is life-giving and transformative, that we never fully exhaust its possibility, that every day in Christ can be a new expression of the grace God gives. I didn't tell you every day would be great. I'm not promising you that every day is going to be sunshine field. I'm not promising you that there will be no hurt, no harm, and no difficult moments along this journey. I'm telling you that even the difficult days and the hurt and the harm you experience can increase the depth that you find in God. Because your strength and your hope is not on what happens to you. Your strength and your hope is found in the one who holds you. It's time, beloved, to go deeper. This, this call to go deeper is not a brand new call. It is one that Paul, in fact, issued to the Ephesian church from the prison cell in in this passage, Paul prays for the church to experience what it means to go deeper in Christ. Please sit with me for a moment. Let's eavesdrop on the pastoral prayer that Paul provides here from a prison cell. If, if you don't mind, walk with me for a few moments through what it is that Paul prays for the church at Ephesus that they would go deeper in God, that they would see God in brand new ways, that they would be uh, uh, revelations of Christ would be revealed to them in ways they had never experienced before. He tells them, you're doing well, but you can always go deeper. L listen to Paul. Pa Paul says, uh, I'm praying that you'll go deeper so that you'll see the development of the unseen. He's, he's, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for you, church at Ephesus, that you will see the development of the unseen. In other words, I'm praying that your greatest growth will not be externally visible, but that your greatest sense of growth will be down in your souls. I'm praying not for the expansion of your borders. I'm praying for the growth of your heart says, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that your inner man will be renewed. I'm praying that your inner man will be magnified. He says, I'm praying 
Church at Ephesus, that you'll receive the intangibles. You, you got your Bible, you need it. Verse 16, he, he, he gives these visible descriptions of invisible ideals. He talks about, I'm praying that you will see and witness God's glorious and unlimited resources that Christ will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Paul does not pray for them to have visible perks. Paul doesn't pray for them to get a brand new sanctuary. Paul doesn't pray for them to have family life center. Paul doesn't pray for them to have a, a large parking lot. Paul, Paul prays that they will have priceless blessings, that they will experience God's unlimited resources being poured into their souls, that they will experience a kind of inner strength that cannot be grabbed or diluted by external experience. He says, I'm praying that the unseen, the inner man, will be developed, that you'll receive the intangibles, and that you will render the proper invitation. You got your Bible, 17, verse 17. He says, I'm praying that Christ will make his home in your hearts. I like, I, I, I like the language here because uh, uh, often when it comes to our Christian experience, uh, we treat Christ as a guest. We treat Christ as a visitor. And Paul says, no, the key, the depth in God is not to let Christ be just the visitor. You got to let Christ be a resident. You got to let him make a home in your heart. He's got to have uh, no rooms in your internal house off limits to him. He got to be able to go anywhere he needs to go so that you can develop and grow and be what God wants you to be. But the thing about Jesus is he doesn't kick down doors. He doesn't break into anybody's internal home. He becomes a resident only when you invite him, when you make room for him, only when by faith you extend the invitation that Christ, I don't want you to just visit me uh, 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 every now and then. I, I don't want to have uh, uh, co co uh, 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 consensual visits with you on the weekends. No, I want you to be involved in my life every single day. Matter of fact, I want you to move in. I want you to be a resident. Pa Paul says, the, 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 the key to going deeper is to develop the inner man, the unseen. So what's happening inside becomes so strong and so capable that it can handle the pressures that come from the outside. Paul says, I'm praying for the development of the unseen, but he also says, I'm praying for the discernment of the unknown. He says, I'm praying... Uh, church at Ephesus, that, that, that you will have a sense of discernment of the unknown. What does that mean? It, it, means, it means Paul says, I'm praying that you will begin to know things and discover things that can only come when Christ reveals them to you by faith says I want you to I want you to grow in Christ so much I want you to be so deep in your connection to Christ that you begin to see things experience things hear things in your inner man that cannot be revealed any other way it says I want I, I, I want you to start to, to discern the things that can't be naturally discerned I, 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 want, I, I, I want your spiritual antenna to be peaked and in tip-top shape so you can pick up the reception from heaven when I start broadcasting to you. I want you to be ready and able to discern what's unknown. How do you do it? Paul says you got to get in the correct position. As first step, you got, you got to get in the right, the, the, the right position. Verse 17, he says, I'm praying that your roots will grow down into God's love and that it will keep you strong that you will find your rootedness not in the things of this world and not in the accoutrements and the accomplishments of this life that you won't find your stability and your foundation in anything external but you'll be so rooted deep in God that he keeps you strong even when you feel weak, it keeps you strong. Even when you feel like you're falling apart, that, that, that you'll get so accustomed to being rooted in God that you'll realize that where you sit really fixes what you see. That when you get rooted in God, it fixes and, 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 and it impacts your perspective and how you see the rest of the world. 
you, 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 you might see hopelessness, but you don't live hopelessly when you're rooted in God. You might see dark days, but you don't live in a dark existence because you are rooted in God. You might see times that are scary, but you don't live in fear because you are rooted in God. He says, I want you in the correct position, but I'm also praying that you'll gain the correct perspective. You, you, you need your Bible today. It's, it's simple expository preaching uh, uh, for our experience today. Verse 18, he says, I'm praying that you might have the power to understand. You might get a glimpse of how wide. How long, how high, and how deep God's love is. He, he, he said, I'm praying that you'll get a glimpse, a, a, a cursory understanding of the dimensions of God's love that are active in your life. See, understanding the love of Christ, Paul is trying to help them to see, is always found in the context of community. Telling them that when you're going to see the depth and the dimensions of God's love, it's never going to be an individual enterprise. You're going to see it as you connect with other believers. And the church at Ephesus was an interesting place because it was not just filled with Jewish and Hebrew believers. It was also filled with Gentiles. And you know how Hebrews and Gentiles often don't get along. But Paul says you have the ability and the opportunity to really experience the fullness of what depth in Christ is because you are in the context of community where you are going to be sharpened by your differences. Oh, I'm preaching good right here because maybe one of the reasons we can't get deep is because we don't know how to love people who are different than us. Maybe one of the reasons we can't get deep is because we have reserved our connection and our sense of community for only people who look, act, think, and function just like. Us. Paul says, no, you're going to get deeper. You got to experience the fullness of that love. He says, you got to gain the correct perspective. Then you got to give the correct participation. I'm in verse 19. He says, may you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. Wow. He just said in the previous verse, I want you to understand how wide, how high, how long, and how deep God's love is. And now he says, you can experience it because it's really too great to understand. Paul checks himself. He self-corrects here. He says, I want you to understand it, but when I think about it, you really can't understand. That the love of God in Christ is not something you can really explain. It can only be experienced. That, that you can't really give accurate verbal description to what God is for you but when you live in the fullness of that love you experience something that is indescribable you can't really tell how it feels you can't really describe it but you know it when you're in it because the depth that is available to you in Christ uh, cannot fully be described, but when you experience it, you know there is nothing else like it. I wonder this morning, is there anybody watching me today that understands that I can't fully describe how much God loves me, but I sure like it when it happens. I can't fully explain to you what Christ means and how Christ has kept me and covered me, but I promise you, can't nobody do me like Jesus. I can't fully describe and explain to you what exactly is occurring theologically and philosophically but I tell you this I looked at my hands and my hands look new I looked at my feet and they did too something happened on the inside of me because I got deep in the one who loved me best Paul, pa Paul here says I'm praying for the development of the unseen I'm praying for the discernment of the unknown. Here's the last one. He says, I'm praying also for the display of the unusual. He, he, he says that because you have committed and decided to be deep in your connection to Christ, he says, I'm praying that you'll get to see some stuff that shallow people will never get to see. He says, I'm praying that you have the kind of experience that is so transformative in your life that, 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 that while it is unusual, supernatural, and extraordinary, 
because you are deep in God, God will trust you with it. Listen to what he says. I'm in verse 20. He, he, he says, I'm praying that you will have, because of your depth in God and your commitment to it, elevated expectation. I'm praying that you stop aiming low. <laughs> I'm praying that you will increase your anticipation of what is possible in your own life. Listen to verse 20. Now all glory to God who is able, watch it, to accomplish infinitely more than we can ask or think. You, you, you know this passage. It says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. Paul simply says that knowing God's ability should impact what you believe God can do. When you get a glimpse of the power and the strength, the height, the width, the depth, and the breadth of God's love active in your life, it changes what you believe is possible. Can I tell you that shallow people wrestle with whether God can do it? Because they've got no experience with it. But deep people believe that God can do it and they look for opportunities every chance they get to witness it. Can I tell you that a life of small expectations is sinful to an exceeding abundantly kind of God? That when you've got small expectations and small uh, uh, views of what is possible, you are dishonoring the God who is able to do above and beyond anything you could ever imagine. Paul says, you, you, you too deep in God to have small dreams. <laughs> when you get deep in God, you refuse to have diminished goals and short-sighted strategies when you get deep in God your whole perspective changes about what's possible he says I want you to have elevated expectations but I also want you to know that with that comes elevated responsibility you 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 do know we didn't read all of verse 20 let me show you the part we skipped now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think wait a minute here it is through his mighty power at work within us. Yep, that God's ableness is available to the extent you and I are willing to be involved. That the ability of God is subject in our lives to our ability and willingness to partner with the one who makes it possible. In other words, what are you saying? I'm telling you God's power works as you work. God's power is seen when your power and work get seen. That when you engage in partnership with God in the depths and the reaches of relationship, something incredible begins to be possible. It generates a kind of hope and a kind of faith and a kind of confidence that nothing else can. Shallow people, always looking for God to do it all. But deep people say, God, I'm out here with you. Let's get it done. Shallow people say, God, I'm waiting on you to figure it all out and to handle it. But deep people say, God, I ain't figured it out, but I trust you enough to head out here in the deep with you. Shallow people say we ain't got the resources to make it happen. I don't see how it's possible. But deep people say, God, the ability of it to happen ain't based on our capacity. It's built on yours. And God, I believe you can do exceeding abundantly above all I could ask or think. Love it, I got to go. God bless you this morning. I'm just praying, like Paul, that you and I will make a decision to go deeper. That we'll decide without hesitation that there is more for us to engage in. That we'll make the commitment today that God has more in store for each and every one of us. 
I'm praying for you. Like Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus. I'm praying today that God will show you that there is more for you. I'm praying today that God will remind you that God is still able to do more than you can ask or think. I'm praying for, for the grove today uh, that God will show you and I uh, that there is no limit to his power. I'm praying for you and I today uh, that God will remind us and make us secure and confident uh, that deep living is where we belong. Uh, that shallow living uh, was never destined to be our portion. Uh, that God has uh, always uh, provided more for us. Uh, and sometimes uh, we don't step into uh, what we should be uh, because we're too nervous uh, and too comfortable in the shallow end. But I hear God today calling us from the shallowness of comfort down in to the depths of dependability. I came to tell you today, we live in a shallow world, but you don't have to live a shallow life. Let me tell you, Grove, the deep is waiting. The deep is waiting on you to say, God, I want more. God, I'll do what it takes to make sure that I don't stay beneath my privileges. God, I'll make sure that I don't get comfortable in places where I don't belong. God, I will make sure that I'll step out where you lead me. I'll go where you tell me. And I'll follow your spirit to the end of my days. God says, I'm waiting for you to step out and go deeper. Your joy is within reach. You just got to go a little deeper. Your hope is within grasp, but you got to go just a little deeper. Your future is brighter than you could ever imagine, but you got to go just a little deeper. Your generations and your bloodlines can be changed. Curses can be broken. Broken, but you gotta go just a little bit deeper. And if you go, God says, I will meet you right there. If you go, God says, I will meet you in the middle of your hurts. I'll meet you in the middle of your pain. I'll give you joy that's unspeakable. I'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. I'll stand by your side. I'll be your banner. I'll heal you. I'll stand with you. I'll make sure you got everything you need. He's calling us to go deeper. Is there anybody that's watching me today that can testify? I'm ready to go deeper. I will not stay in the shallow end. I will go deeper. If that's your prayer today, do me one favor. Lift your hands, open up your mouth, and say, God, I will. Say, God, I will. Say, God, I will. Go deeper. If that's your confession, seal it with the praise. If that's your story, seal it with worship. Lift your hands, open up your mouth, and say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Go deeper. You are not built for shallowness. You're designed for more than that. 
God has something incredible, something extraordinary, something spectacular, something that will blow your mind. What you got? Stop settling for the shallow part. Got to rearrange some things so that you find the room to go deeper in God. Come on, take the journey with us. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Take the journey with us today. Make the commitment. No more shallow living for me. I'm worth too much. I got too much in front of me. I got too much testimony behind me. To not go where God is summonsing me to go. Exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. You live in a shallow world. You don't have to have a shallow life. The deep is waiting. I want to talk to somebody today who hears that call. But you hear it in a very profound way because it might be the first time you've ever heard it. I'm telling you that's Jesus. With his nail-scarred hands, lifting his voice to you, telling you, hey, it's time for you to make that choice, that decision to follow a resurrected Savior. If you've never embraced the Lord Jesus as such, the pulling of the reins of your heart today, it's making it clear. It's time to make that choice. I want you to know it's simple. It's not as hard as you think. If you got your cell phone, you can make that choice today. Take that cell phone and text the word new partner to this number, 84576. When you do so, there will be a response. It'll give you some instructions. Tell you how to make that choice, that decision. We stand ready today to affirm and to celebrate and to honor that choice because it's a choice we made. It's a choice many of us know all about. It's hard at first, but you'll never regret going deeper with Christ. You text that number, you'll get instructions. Maybe there's somebody today who had, who has gone deeper before, but you pull back. And the fellowship with God is not what it used to be. The connection to the Savior is not how it used to be. Maybe this pandemic experience became the thing that ripped at the fragments and threads of your fellowship with God. I want you to know God loves you just as you are. God ain't mad. God's calling you. God's been calling you. Time for you to answer. And return back to the depths where you know you belong. If that's your request today, I want to rededicate. I want to get back in line. You text the word new partner to 84576 right up there on your cell phone. You also will receive instructions how to take the next steps. We will celebrate and honor what God is doing in your life. Maybe there's somebody today watching. You're already in the deep. You're out there with Jesus. But you're out there alone because you don't have a community, a connection, a church home, and a church family. You can grow and swim together. Learn from one another. When you get in trouble, you can find somebody to grab your hand and help you to get your equilibrium and your balance back. Everybody, every believer needs a place where they can be rooted and grounded. I'll be honest, if you hear the voice of God today, I want you to respond. I want you to make that step. If you hear God saying, the Grove is where you're supposed to be, and even if it's a global and online connection, that's where I want you. If you hear that voice those instructions today, I want you to know the steps are very simple for you too. You text the word new partner to 84576 and you'll get instruction. I'd be honored to be your pastor. We'd be honored to be your church family. We'd love to receive you. Be a part of your growth, your development, and your depth as it continues to grow. Maybe you're watching me today. The cell phone thing doesn't work for you. Would you like to do it on a laptop, perhaps a desktop or a tablet? No problem. You can go to our website, thegrovenash.org, right now. Go right now. Go right now. When you 
Go to that website right on the front page. There's a button that says partner online. That word partner means the same thing as member. It's the connection point. You click that button, you'll get instructions. You follow those steps. We will be absolutely beside ourselves with excitement to receive you just as you are. Let the Lord lead you today. Deeper is calling. Beloved, I want to remind you also that giving is a part of our worship experience. You don't have to wait until a certain part of the worship or even a certain day. You give however God leads you and whenever God leads you to give. Three ways to do it. First way is through our website, thegrovenash.org. You click on the Give button. It walks you through the steps. The second is via an app called Givelify. We encourage you to download it. Very simple, very easy. Three taps you can give from anywhere in the world. The third way is for those who are unfamiliar or uncomfortable with giving online. We get it. Simply take your gifts, deposit it into a stamped envelope, send it to our church address, Watson Grove Baptist Church, 1415 Horton Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37212. Those gifts will go exactly where you designate them to go. Listen, beloved, this brings us to an end of our worship experience today. What a joy it's been to worship an almighty God with such an amazing group of people. I praise God for you in the virtual sanctuary, and I'm praying that the Lord will cover you and keep you. I'm praying that the Lord's hand will rest upon you. I'm praying that the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and to give you peace. Bless you as you come and bless you as you go. God's got something in store for you this week. It begins with steps to going deeper. God be with you. We love you. We'll see you on Tuesday.